Hello guys, welcome to the Train Parrot. This is going to be a very different video. I'm going to talk about the Bitcoin dominance and I'm going to talk about the potential for people getting disappointed about this theory that once we get into the 60% of the dominance, there is a high chance that we go into altcoin season. And I'm going to look at this from different perspectives, not just TA, but also some fundamentals, liquidity flow. So I hope that this video is going to be referenced in the future when we start looking at an actual old coin season and we realize that we got it, but it was quite different than what we were expecting. Guys, if you like this type of content, make sure that you're subscribed to the channel, hit the notification bell so you get notified every time I put out one of these videos. And since this is a very different video, I'm not expecting 500 likes, but it will be really nice if we get over 200 likes. Let's summarize where we're coming from and let's admit that I do watch Benjamin Cowen and I appreciate his analysis and how good he is at spotting patterns. But if you've been living under a rock, I'll give you a very quick summary. Bitcoin dominance is the percentage of the whole total market cap that is actually on Bitcoin and not on stable coins, not on all coins, nothing else but Bitcoin. And if you look at the history of the Bitcoin dominance, obviously before 2017, there were not many alternatives to Bitcoin. So it was reaching highs very close to 100% meaning that the total market cap of crypto was primarily allocated to Bitcoin. And that's it. With the introduction of stable coins, introductions of many, many competitors at that time, they were called like that to Bitcoin. The dominance plummeted from 99.3% at the very highest in 2014 and in 2016 to lows of just barely 35% of Bitcoin dominance. And it was in 2017, 2018, where we started hearing about Litcoin, Cardano, XRP, Ethereum, and all the different altcoins from that generation. Many of them still around, some of them stinking, disgustingly horrible, but that's for another video. But what you can see here is that there is an oscillation of the Bitcoin dominance. There is a seasonality attached to these oscillations. And why do we care about the Bitcoin dominance going up and down is because when Bitcoin dominance with most of the cash is allocated to Bitcoin, we start looking for the dominance to top. And we have that expectation that once it tops, as long as we are not in an economy that is shrinking, some of that should flow into even higher risk than Bitcoin. Believe it or not, but Bitcoin is considered the safer asset among all crypto. Of course, relative to other assets, it's just a crazy horse, but in crypto is the safest you can be if you ignore stable coins. In this particular chart, you're going to see each and every old coin season. To qualify for an old coin season, what I do is I go to the website of the old coin season. I assume you all know this website. Just search on Google old coin season index and it's going to take you to this one in blockchaincenter.net. To qualify for an old coin season, according to my own criteria, is a move from the very bottom of the index at the low 10s or low 20s into above 75. The whole move is an old coin season. In old coin season, you expect all the old coins, regardless of which one you pick, to make a move to the upside. And at that point in the old coin season, once you are there, it's not about making money or not making money. It's about making more money or making less money. You pick the best coins, you rally more. And that's why there is so much fuss about when is the old coin season is going to come. And it's not just about that. It's because since pretty much 2022, the Bitcoin dominance has been going higher and higher within this quite bearish pattern is an ascending wedge. And as you can see, the Bitcoin dominance is breaking out from a bearish pattern from the top which is pointing out that the dominance is just going mentally bullish, not great for all coins. If you notice in here, we have two all coin seasons, one from June of 2022 
into September 2022. You can see that every time that we have an old coin season, the dominance collapses. One of the best old coin seasons I can remember is the one from January 2021 into June 2021. That is when Bitcoin was in the process of topping with the first leg of the bull market. Why is this happening? Because people think if Bitcoin tops, the next thing that should capture that flow of the cash is higher risk than Bitcoin. So there is something called the flow of crypto, the flow of cash in crypto. And there is the expectation that things flow from stable coin first into the king, Bitcoin, then into the top three market cap, top 10 market cap after going into a cycle of increasing the risk. People eventually land into meme coins, shit coins, and then the whole thing goes back into USDT and restarts. And as we were approaching 2020, which is pretty much where we are, in September of 2020, October, December, the Bitcoin dominance was topping out. It actually topped in December 2020, which equivalent to now will be this December. So we are roughly one month and a couple of weeks away from the seasonality for Bitcoin dominance to top right after or a few weeks after the first rate cut and you can see the topping process the difference is that in the previous cycle we have a first stop in 2019 coming out of the bear market at 72 percent dominance we came back down into 57 and then back up into 73 percent from there, that was the top, and we started having the best old coin season. And pretty much this narrative that we had there in the previous cycle, it's what's driving the idea, the expectation, that from this ascending wedge into the resistance of 60%, there should be a stop for the Bitcoin dominance, a collapse back down towards the 50% and produce a significant initial old coin season or possibly a huge one with a move of 40% plus of the Bitcoin dominance down, flowing that cash into the old coins. So that is kind of the base of the whole theory and bullishness right now in most of the channels talking about old coin season. And we're going to challenge most of these things we're going to find some pessimistic, some realistic, and hopefully some accurate forecasts to have a little bit more grounded targets for when and how big the old coin season can be in the next year. And following this old coin season, which is the last one we had from September 2023 into December, end of the year last year. That was an old coin season. You can see we made a move in here from 16 into the index getting into 80. That was an old coin season. No questions about that. But after that, we haven't had a single one. You can see that after this stopped, it just went down and we had some sort of process here looking like a breakout of the index. You can do an imaginary line in here and you can see that it broke out with this top. It retest at 23 and it should be due for that old coin season. So that is a point towards the idea of getting an old coin season. But let's look for the counterpoints and what is different at this point in the market that could, at the very least, make that old coin season smaller than everyone is expecting. Point number one, if we look right after this old coin season, what we're going to find is the inflows of the ETF starting to become large, parabolic. When do we start having these inflows going from 1000 straight into 12,000 into the spot ETF? That happened from January, end of January into mid-March. At that point, the dominance made a move from 50% to 57%. After that, we've been sideways, just more or less like the inflows on the ETF. And in September 2024, once we start this aggressive parabolic move towards 24,000 this time, we also can see that the dominance makes this move up. We also know that spot CBD has been selling and we know that large wells are accumulating. And it's very clear to us that retail hasn't been here at least since August until very recently, now end of October. 
So in my opinion, the move of 50% dominance until 60% dominance has been just crafted by what the ETFs and the large wells, the institutions and the rich people are doing, not the retail. And you might think, yeah, I know that. I know that from a long time ago. Sure, but what is different in here is that all this move into very high levels of dominance was not just from institutions. We had a very different cycle at that point. We had retail being literally injected with cash from money printer. We had gold topping and we had the dollar topping and the Fed was just having a party of adding more to their balance sheets in terms of bonds. So cash, the point is cash was coming in to retail. And retail was holding those coins in exchanges, meaning that they were very liquid version of Bitcoin. They were able at any point in time, after seeing that they have such a huge gains from Bitcoin, to think maybe now is the time to flip into higher risk, into all coins. And I'm going to do that in the exchange. I'm going to sell it for the new shiny old coin that my friend influencer is convincing me to buy. And that's pretty much what they were doing in December. That's why the dominance had such a huge collapse into 40%. So going back in here, if I was right and I was thinking all the move from 50% to 60% is being just crafted thanks to the inflows of the ETFs on spot. The question is, how liquid is this? How likely do you think that this Bitcoin that has been bought primarily by wells that withdraw into cold storage together with ETFs that are 80% driven by institutions, do you think that at some point the train of the Bitcoin dominance is going to just mimic the previous cycle? And that is the big challenge at the moment. How are we going to do that? Option one they just continue to hold in the ETF and there are no flows from that huge move from 50% to 60% dominance contributing to that into actual altcoins or at least not in this magnitude that we can see there. Possibly altcoins that are altcoin seasons that are short lived like the one in here in June into September, just three months and a move down of 16%. But an old coin season where the dominance moves 46% down, I think that is questionable at the moment, at the very least. Option two is that some of these institutions, since they found so easily access to buy Bitcoin via ETF and it's so convenient to hold in such a way because it's familiar with the way they manage their, their other assets, they might think, what if we go for the Ethereum ETF? And that is assuming that they understand the flow of money on Bitcoin, that once it hits a top on the Bitcoin dominance, it flows into the next layer of the market cap down below, which is Ethereum, in this case, in this cycle, Solana, etc., XRP. And that could be an option because there, these products in here in BlackRock, Fidelity Bitwise, are available for Ethereum and for Bitcoin. So there is a way to do such a thing. So far, we have crossed 60% and we are not seeing such a thing. So there is as well the counter hypothesis that the Bitcoin dominance may continue running higher than many people are expecting. But there's a third option, which is Bitcoin continues to rally thanks to the inflows on Bitcoin spot ETF that we are currently seeing in this chart, plus what the wells, the millionaires are adding to their stack in cold storage that we have seen on the big whale explorer and the long-term holders. And then suddenly, eventually, the global liquidity index starts picking up with this breakout that we've been talking about for a couple of weeks. And the global injections on China and on other countries as well are contributing to finally seeing retail coming back and having buying power to invest on those old coins. If we get there on time before we run out of time and cycle is completed, then sure, we can see a massive old coin season of those proportions. But at the moment, I find very hard to believe 
that something similar can play out in the current conditions. I guess what I'm trying to say in very short is that I don't think that a 60% Bitcoin dominance translates automatically, regardless of the rest of the conditions of the macroeconomy, into an altcoin season. Let me know in the comments if you agree with this statement, if you think that I am missing something critical that actually makes absolutely evident that we are very close to an altcoin season. Could it be that there are some players at the moment betting on all coins that we are completely ignoring in this chart and that we are definitely due for a breakdown of the bomb of the Bitcoin dominance into the area of all coin season that everybody's spotting in their charts. Guys, regardless if there is an altcoin season or not, if you want to take a long or a short on altcoins or on Bitcoin, consider looking at Bybit. I have a link down in the description that offers 30,000 in rewards subject to trading volume, the lowest fees to trade on Bybit. I run 24 seven my trading bots using Bybit's API on trading bot platforms. But when it comes to opening an exchange very quick, I pick Blowfin. It doesn't require any KYC. You can have as many accounts as you want using leverage, trade all coins as well, have the lowest fees and a 10,000 bonus again, subject to trading volume. I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.